It's probably the best time now for Elon Musk to make good on his offer to bring a few spare engines to ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket. Well, uh, I mean, just in case. Uh, you didn't hear? ULA's Vulcan has experienced many failures recently, including an upper stage explosion in March and another engine trouble this week. The first flight of Vulcan is certainly not even happening this year. How did it come to this? What can ULA do to overcome these hurdles? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The debut of United Launch Alliance's next generation rocket, the Vulcan Centaur, is now scheduled for the fourth quarter of 2023, following an investigation into a mishap that destroyed an upper stage test article, company CEO and President Tori Bruno said during a media briefing on Thursday. ULA had hoped to launch the two-stage rocket on its inaugural mission, dubbed Certification 1, or CERT-1, this summer. However, extra adjustments needed on the Vulcan first stage, as well as an ongoing investigation into a hydrogen leak that caused an explosion blast during certification testing of the rocket Centaur 5 upper stage delayed that. Bruno said the leak that prompted the months-long investigation into its Centaur 5 test article came around halfway through its 15th test at a test facility at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, down I-565 from ULA's factory in Decatur. The hydrogen tank in the Centaur 5 upper stage is about 40 feet long and has an 18 feet diameter and is built from stainless steel that Bruno described as thinner than a dime, or thicker than a high-quality wedding invitation. It sits atop the liquid oxygen cryogenic tank. Both are wrapped up in a long cylinder and are separated by an intermediate bulkhead. Bruno said the leak, which lasted for about four and a half minutes before the rupture occurred, was on the forward dome of the hydrogen tank. The dome consists of a series of curved triangles with a door at the top, which provides access to the tank. He said it's similar to the design of the Centaur 3 used on the Atlas V, but notably larger. During the investigation, they determined that that a weld near the door experienced a greater load than it could handle due to its geometry, thus leading in part to the leak. Bruno said the other contributing factor was determined to be the type of weld that was used. For the Centaur 3, ULA used an arc weld compared to a laser weld for the Centaur 5. He said that the as-built strength of these laser welds is less than we had assessed when we did coupon testing, which is a method of evaluating materials. The two things together, higher loads, somewhat lower strength in the welds are what caused the crack to begin, Bruno said. He also pointed back to the fact that this test article had performed 14 prior tests, which is considerably more testing and exposure to loads and many more pressure cycles and lots and lots of more time of the structure sitting under pressure than would ever happen in any single flight. So what is ULA's ultimate solution? Bruno said essentially they will reinforce the design of the dome, which could rectify the issue. They will be adding about 300 pounds of reinforcements to the dome of the Centaur 5 that will fly as part of the CERT-1 mission. That includes what Bruno describes as a ring doubler, 15 stripped doublers, as well as removing the milling process that previously reduced part of the dome's surface to 26 thousandths of an inch. In comparison to the rest of the Vulcan Centaur rocket, the additional 300 pounds represents about a 0.25% of the vehicle's weight. Bruno said following the first rocket's alteration, the ones right after it will be about 150 pounds heavier. The proposed fix is currently being implemented on the third Centaur 5, which Bruno said should be finished soon. It will be traded for the Centaur 5 that was stacked with the Vulcan booster during last month's flight readiness firing test. The second Centaur 5, which was intended to be flown on the CERT-2 mission, will instead be converted to a test asset and used to qualify the CERT-1 mission trajectory. Bruno said that sets them up to fly the Cirque 1 mission during the fourth quarter of 2023. The fourth Centaur 5 will also be used to replace the test article that was severely damaged in the hydrogen leak incident. That will allow them to complete qualification for the rest of the Vulcan fleet by the first quarter of 2024. And then from that point forward, we're done with this because that's the last thing we need to do to qualify the vehicle, Bruno said. So that's the whole path. In relation to the latest explosion of BE-4, Bruno said that that is nothing of concern. Oh, really now? Thursday's briefing also came days after news broke that one of Blue Origin's BE-4 engines exploded during an acceptance test last month. Two BE-4 engines powered the Vulcan booster on each rocket. The engine that exploded was intended to be delivered for the CERT-2 flight of Vulcan, supporting the inaugural launch of Sierra Space's Dream Chaser cargo spacecraft. Bruno said the engine in question failed its first acceptance test and was then the middle of its second acceptance test procedure, or ATP, 
when it crossed the threshold of acceptance and the computer attempted to shut it down. He said the threshold was too high and the computer wasn't able to shut the engine down before it had a burn through. When asked if the issue gave ULA concern about the engines on the Vulcan booster that will fly the CERT-1 mission, Bruno said no, since they examined to see if the issue from the failed engine existed on the others and it didn't, nor did it indict the qualification at all. We were very confident in the design and the workmanship of the assets that have passed acceptance. This is not unexpected. It won't be the last, and there will be other components on the rockets that also fail acceptance testing, Bruno said. And you know, I'm flattered by the attention we have now. That a routine acceptance test was colorfully discussed on social media, but it really isn't news. Well, Bruno seemed to be trying to play down the significance of the failure. There is a reason the saying, that's why we test, exists. But remember, BE-4 is years behind schedule. The first flight engines were originally contracted for delivery in 2017, and this was the third production engine. Of course, it's better to lose an engine in testing than during a launch, especially on a rocket that can't lose an engine to succeed. But that's an overly dismissive way to view the loss of expensive production hardware, let alone another setback. The downstream effects are especially why this matters. The first pair of BE-4 engines recently passed a critical test on Vulcan for the first launch. But ULA doesn't see doesn't need just CERT-1 to fly. The company needs Vulcan to complete two launches successfully before the U.S. Space Force will sign off on it, flying valuable national security missions. SpaceX is dominating the launch market, and many in the industry, both competitors and customers, fear a monopoly. All six of ULA's recently assigned Space Force missions are set to fly on Vulcan, since the company's currently operational rockets are retiring. So maybe this doesn't affect CERT-1, but what about CERT-2 and the launches to come? As one propulsion engineer wrote on social social media, you learn a lot in development testing. You learn a little bit in qualification testing. Blessed be they who continue to learn in acceptance testing. Yep, space is hard. It's sounding a little too much like thoughts and prayers these days. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the amazing happenings in the realm of space. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.